Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for module three, lesson two, homework. And the objective on this lesson is at the bottom of the page, make equivalent fractions with sums of fractions with like denominators. So this is really, the concept is super basic, easy, simple, uh, but uh, Eureka Math always finds a way to complicate things, so we have to also use a number line. Now, when you're looking at the number line, it may help you to see what's happening. Um, but let's do a few samples, and then you'll see uh, mostly with the number line as it ties into the algebraic part, uh, if the number line is helping you at all. So anyway, we do drop the number line pretty quickly in the next few lessons. It's really just to kind of get the idea of what's happening when you add. So let's get into it. If you have not watched the problem set video and you don't really know what you're doing, please go watch the problem set video. Take down your notes, get a little practice under your belt before you try your homework. Also, you should be finishing your homework before you watch this video so that you can just check and make sure you got all the parts uh, and that you're kind of on the right track. Okay, so we're gonna show each expression on a number line, solve, so this is an expression, an expression does not have an equal sign. So we're gonna create a number line. You could do that for each of them, but we'll just do one at a time. And notice that the denominator is ninths, so that I'm gonna create a zero to one, but it has to be in nine parts. When you look at number one, that means it's all nine parts out of nine. So in between here, we have to have eight more pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Some kids will say, oh my gosh, how did you get those exactly? I, I'm just really, I don't know, I've done a lot of these. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Um, when you think about how many pieces you have to get on there, I always like to try to find that middle, but this one didn't have a middle, so I was just kind of guessing. Eh, I need about four here and about four there. So now number them. This is the first tick mark after the zero, so this is one ninth. This is two ninths, three ninths, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they're all ninths. It's like your label. Okay, and so uh, if I have four ninths plus one ninth, then we're always going to be starting at zero. And so you get yourself over to here to the four, but then you're still going to add, <laughs> went right past it, right there to five. So this is your four ninths, okay, and this is your one ninth. And so when you have four plus one, you end up at five. And that's the solve part. You're getting the answer. So it's really just looking at those numerators. That's the part you're adding. Move the bottom part across because that's the label. It's like saying, you know, four bananas plus one banana equals how many bananas? Well, it's five bananas. So the label, the label is on the bottom. This time we're not dealing with ninths, we're dealing with fourths. And we're going to have more hops because here we have a big hop and a small hop. Here we're gonna have all the same size, but this one we have only four pieces. So if this is four fourths, that would be one, and this is zero fourths. So the halfway would be our two fourths. Half of that would be one fourth half of the other would be your three-fourths. Zero, one, two, three, four. Notice that it's just, if you make your halves, it kinda can help you have evenly spaced pieces. And this isn't perfect, but it's close enough. All right, so we have our one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one plus one. So when you add all those up, you end up at four-fourths. So Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. I want you to notice that we have one, that any number over itself, four fourths, two halves, eight eighths, whatever it is, if you have that over itself, it's equal to one, okay? Another number line here, and we have sevenths, so we're gonna have zero sevenths. If you wanna start from your left, you can do that 
uh, and just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that will be your one. That way you can just go equally distanced. You can use a ruler if you're really particular, but that just takes up a lot of time. And this is an art class, and we're not selling these. We're just trying to do a little math. Okay, and we're going to have two and two and two. So you're going to have a hop of two, hop over, that's for two as well, hop over again. And you can anticipate what's coming, two plus two plus two is six. So you think, okay, I should end up at six sevenths for my final answer. Another number line. Now here is where we have our algebraic look to it. Now, when you have a number that's multiplied, this has to be done first. You can't add over here first because addition doesn't have the strength or power that um, multiplication does. So in the order of operations, and we've already gone over that, uh, we need to follow the proper order. So in this one, I have fifths, but I'm going to have many fifths. So instead of having zero to one, I'm going to start with zero fifths, and I'm going to make one here and two here. So I'm going to have one fifth, two fifths, three, four, five fifths, all the fifths, okay? And then we're going to do this again with fifths, so it's going to be six, seven, eight, nine, ten fifths label all fifths all fives on the bottom okay now we're gonna have two times three fifths so it's three fifths once one two three fifths twice that plus one okay now that leaves us with seven fifths so if you look at where you are this is one, we're past one. How many past one are we? Well, we're two. Notice the difference between seven and five. So we have one and two extra fifths or seven fifths. Those are the same thing, okay? That's the same value. So those, that's your answer there. Okay, how about part two? Express each fraction as the sum of two or three equal fractional parts. So if you want to <clears throat> really focus on making them equal, that's going to be the key here. Looking at your numerator will help you figure out, well, can I get equal parts and how can I get the equal parts? Because I could make several different parts out of these, but we just want two or three equal parts. The only thing we have to do if we have the two or three equal parts, which is like this, is to rewrite them as a multiplication equation, and we have to do one of them on a number line. Okay, so if I could break six into two parts, then it would be three and three. If I have three elevenths and three elevenths, and I wanna show that on my number line to get my six elevenths, then my number line would have elevenths as my whole. Zero. Okay, one, two, three. Ooh, that's not a very good hop. Okay, so one, two, three. And then I'm gonna have four, five, six. Okay, just keep making your elevenths. And I have three again. Where do I end up? I'm at six elevenths. That's all you need to show. You don't have to keep going like you can. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 11, elevenths would be your one. Don't really need to get that far. It's just showing you that the three plus the three makes the six and there's your answer in two equal parts. Also, two times three elevenths is supposed to be shown so that you can show the algebraic part uh, as a multiplication equation. And since it's an equation, uh, you can go ahead and 
It's not the expression. It's the equation. And so we can put the answer. Okay. Hopefully that's helpful. You don't need to do the number line for the others, but I want you to think about two or three equal parts. Now, since 9 is not evenly divisible by 2, it is divisible by 3. So you want to have 3 plus 3 plus 3 to give you your 9 fourths. So how many times is that repeated? Well, it's repeated 3 times. 3 times 3 fourths equals 9 fourths. Okay, so this is what they want you to recognize is really kind of moving forward in our math. Now, how about 12? So, and, and kids will say, well, I could do 2, 2, and 2, and that's 2 or 3 equal fractional parts. I'm going to use 2 as often as I can so I can maximize my numbers. Okay, so can you break 12 into two parts? Yes, you can. By using 6. That will give you your 12, and you can do 2 times 6 eighths to give you 12 eighths. Okay, so that can uh, also be equal. Can you do 4, 4, and 4? Yes, you can, but I'm going to choose to do the one with 2. How about for 27? Not an even number, but you can divide it by 3, right? So what's going to be your factor? 9, because 9 and 9 and 9 make 27. So how many times did we repeat this fraction? Three times. And so then that is what we're solving with multiplication versus addition. Okay, I hope that makes sense for you. All right, and then on the back here, express each of the following as the sum of a whole number and a fraction. Show part C and D on number lines. So what do you mean? Well, look at the fraction. If you've watched the other videos, then you know what happens when you have a big number on top. That means that the value is greater than 1. So if you have a whole number and a fraction, we're greater than 1. The whole number is the one or two or three, and then the fraction is what's left over after we uh, show this in parts. So take your nine fifths, and how many pieces would make a whole? Remember to look at your denominator, and if you put that on the top, then this equals one. All five fifths make one, okay? so. How many are left over between 9 and 5? Well, there are 4 left over. So if I have all 5, so if, if I had 5 fifths and I add 4 fifths, I would get my 9 fifths. So to show as the sum of a whole number and a fraction, basically it's 1 plus 4 fifths. Here's your whole number, here is your fraction. Here's your whole number, here's your fraction. This is basically the same thing, but this is the whole number, okay? So this is called a mixed number, and this would be your fractions showing this one as a whole number. How about seven halves? So can you break this in two pieces or three pieces? Now, what if I had six halves? See, if I'm breaking it into two pieces right here, if I maximize my, um, my fraction, then six divided by two is what? Three. So what's left between seven and six? One is left. So if I have six halves plus one half, I get my seven halves. If I have 6 divided by 2, I get 3 plus the half. That makes 3 and a half. Notice the relationship. I can. This is a division problem. We've talked about this. I could divide 7 by 2 and get 3, okay? And then I would have 1 left over. So now we're kind of taking that long division, and we're making fractions out of our remainders. Um, 
So it's just trying to help you get your wrap your mind around what is a fraction? What can I do with it? What are all the things I can do with a fraction? How about this one? Okay, 25 seven. So what's how many times can I fit seven into 25 to maximize my whole number? Okay, so if I had 21 sevenths, okay, just like I did up here, I want to maximize it. What's the difference between 25 and 21? So if I have 21 sevenths plus 4 sevenths, I'm going to get my 25 sevenths. Okay, what is this whole number? Well, that's going to be 3. So 3 plus 4 sevenths, there's your 3 and 4 sevenths. So now I have a mixed number. I have this improper fraction. Uh, I could do 7 sevenths plus 7 sevenths plus 7 sevenths. That would be three of them. If you have to do a number line like you do for this one because C and D are on number lines. We're going to get past three, so you want to have, say, up to four, two, and I should put whole numbers on top, be consistent, there you go. Now this, you know, is going to be seven sevenths. This will be 14 sevenths. This is my 21 sevenths, okay? That's my three. This would be 28 sevenths. You can predict that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going to number every single one. I just want to show you that if you have 21 sevenths, which is essentially seven sevenths and seven sevenths and seven sevenths. Okay, that's one and one and one then you're making your way down to the 21 three times, once, twice, three times, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more, and we have four that we have to count. So it's one, two, three, four. Okay, so here's your three and four sevenths. So what would that be? 22, 23, 24, 25. And that's where your answer lives on the number line. So it's here and here. Okay, so that's, I don't know, the only benefit really to the number lines is just seeing it visually. How about for 21 ninths? How many ninths can you fit into 21? Well, I could fit uh, 18 ninths. That would give me my two holes. And what's the difference between 21 and 18? And so we're going to have our uh, whole number and fraction. Whole number and fraction. This is your two. This is your fraction and your number line. This time we have ninths as our label. We have to get past two, but only to three. One, two, and these are in ninths, so this would be your nine ninths. Now I have, I have all the nine ninths once, and then all the nine ninths twice to get me the two. Once, twice, and then this last section is broken into, this is, 18 and that would be 27. We're not going to get that far because we only go uh, 1, 2, 3, that's where we're going to stop. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So right here, 19, 20, 21. Very tiny, squeeze it in. Squeeze it in so that you can see those extra 3 ninths. So it's two full 9 ninths plus nine ninths or one plus one plus the three ninths. Okay, so I hope that is helpful for you to see those on the number line. It's super time consuming and yeah, we don't use them for a very long time. All right, last one. Oh yeah, click subscribe if you like the math videos. Come back again. I got problem sets. I've got 
I'm working on homework videos. Um, okay, so here we go. Natalie sawed five boards of equal length to make a stool. Each was nine tenths of a meter long. Here's your fraction. What is the total length of the boards she sawed? She sawed five. There's your number. Okay. Uh, express your answer as the sum of a whole number and the remaining fractional units, kind of like we're making mixed numbers up here. Draw a number line to represent the problem. It's going to be a long number line because we have five times the nine tenths. So it's five times nine tenths is basically what you're showing. So each time we have the nine tenths, that's a whole number divided into 10 parts. So, and we have to do it five times. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And that can be your whole number. And we can make six, but don't need it. Um, and each of these uh, singles has to be broken into 10 parts because our, our tenths is right here. So that's going to be 0 tenths and 10 tenths. This is 20 tenths because 20 divided by 10 is 2. And this is 30 tenths because 30 divided by 10 is 3. And so on. And so on. Okay. Now to show how it's going to hop uh, the sum of the whole number and the remaining fractional units, we're going to have our 9 tenths 5 times. So show that on the number line. Here's five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's your fifth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth is already there. One, two, three, four, five should be in the middle. Six, seven, eight, nine, tenth is already there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is already there. Five of equal length of nine tenths. So here's your first top. Right to the nine tenths. That's one. Now from here, if you have to really count your tick marks, good luck, be careful. But I know that nine plus nine is 18. So I'm gonna go right here to my 18 tenths and I'm gonna show my hop just like that. Okay, put a little dot if it helps you to stop. Where's my third hop? It's gonna be at the third one down, 27 tenths. That's the third one, 27, 28, 29, 30. See right here, 27. Uh, what's 9 times 4? That's going to be at 36 right here. So here's your fourth hop of 9. So see, that's right there. That's the second. That's the third. That's the fourth. And we need one more. And it's going to end up right here at 45 tenths. Now, I can't just leave this with 45 tenths. So um, I need the whole number. So how far did I get down the number line? Okay, 45 tenths is really just a division problem. How many tens can you fit into 45? Well, I can fit it four times with five tenths left over. And so your answer is four and five tenths. And, uh, and so that is the blah, blah, blah. What is the total length? Meters. Four and five tenths meters was cut. Don't forget that label. All right, and I hope this was helpful. So uh, come back again, and we'll see you on another video. Bye for now.